Today, let's talk about the work of angels. I think one of the greatest jobs and one of the most honorable jobs in all of God's holy, amazing world would be to be a messenger, to be an angel, to be at God's beck and call, and to help him with the affairs of his kingdom. It would be really cool to be an angel, but I think it's more cool to be a human being. So let's jump in. So, angels drive spirit horses. Now, I happen to be a horse lover, so I'm like, yeah, hello, let's do this. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 12. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. So, in other words, we talking about spirit beings driving spirit horses, and they just come and swooped old Elijah up off this earth. I'm like, wow, what a way to go. Woohoo! Getting to go in a chariot of fire. Yeah, well, because I'm looking at verse 11, it says, And it came to pass as they, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and whoo, horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. So that chariot just went, bam, right through. Elijah and Elisha walking along together. Can you imagine that? Just get out of the way, Elisha. You're staying here. We're here for Elijah. Phew, and they just kind of grabbed him up and took him. And it says Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Can you imagine that? I can understand old Elisha now. He saw it, and he's like, uh -huh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. He's like, Yeah, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be like speechless. Yeah, that'd be about the only thing that could make me speechless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. So they drive spirit horses. Let's look over here in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 13. I'm like, I'm liking this. 13 through 17. And uh, again, and he said, Go and spy where he is, and I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he's in Dothan. Therefore he... Therefore sent he tither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen earlier and gone, gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Uh-huh. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Woohoo! Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but, oh, that just makes me like, mmm, yes, hallelujah. Now, can you imagine getting that job? I'm like, yeah. So, the work of angels, they guard gates, okay? Now, we've talked about our own personal gates, the eye gate, the ear gate, the nose gate, the mouth gate, all different kind of gates we need to guard. We need the Holy Spirit guarding them. But what about the angels that guard gates? How about a Revelation 21 and 12? They guard gates, Revelation 21, 12, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and the gates, 12 angels and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Oh, so if those gates each have an angel, you talking about an angel guarding the gate, you are not getting in or out. Yeah. Without the angel's permission. Hello. You might want to have a note from the Lord on that one, right? Well, it's just like the, the cherubim that guard the Garden of Eden. Um, gate guarding. Yeah. So, I don't know about y'all, but saints, it's, it sounds really cool to see an angel and everything, but you got to be some fearsome beings. You ain't just going to stand there and be like, oh, hello. You can be like, ah! But we're not to worship angels. We're only to worship the Lord himself. Oh, I like this next one. Wage war in actual bodily combat. Okay, check this out, saints. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. They wage war in actual bodily combat. Oh, this is cool. Check it out. 2 Thessalonians. I'll tell you what, if you're going to do Bible study, you better know where your stuff's at. You'll be here all day flipping through it. 2 Thessalonians first, I'm sorry, the first uh, chapter, verses 7 through 10. Desiring to be teachers of the law, under, oh, wait a minute, no, that's the first one. Ah, sorry, you know, there's more than two books, so you know, you got to make sure you're in the right one. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7, ah, here we go. Oh, uh, no. There we go again. Come on, Leslie. Get it together. Uh, it's either Thessalonians or Timothy, and I can't be in both of them at the same time. All right, I promise you I'm in the right one now. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7. Oh, it helps if you're in the right scripture, Leslie. Hello? Sister with a testimony. Y'all pray for me. All right, here we go. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. They wage war in actual bodily com uh, combat. Wow. Verse 7, that's a wake up call, saints. Jesus coming with his angels. Yeah, if one angel can take out hmm, like 300 something thousand or 83, I don't know, it was, it was a lot of thousands of angel, uh, humans that he took out. That's a lot of, woo, that's a lot of power in just one angel. So if Jesus is coming with all his angels, hmm, yeah, Armageddon, you might as well just give it up now. Why even bother? Makes no sense. I guess they got to try though. Revelations 12, 7 through 9. Revelation 12, 7 through 9. That one's easier to find. There's no 1 Timothy, 2nd, you know, and all that. Yeah, Thessalonians. Uh, Revelation 12, 7 through 9 reads on this wise, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So, waging war and actual mm -hmm, bodily combat, angels got it going on now. Angels also, the work of angels, hey, Sister Bridget, how's it going? To execute judgment. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want no angel of judgment coming to me. That's, it's scary enough to have an angel that, you know, going to give you good news coming to you. You don't want to meet the angel of judgment. Genesis chapter 19, verse 2. Genesis chapter 19, verse 2. And he said, Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Well, we know what story this is. Uh, Genesis chapter uh, 19, and it goes on, if you read the entire chapter, you talking about the angels that went to Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah. They went to Sodom and Gomorrah for a specific purpose. They were carrying judgment with them. I think even until the last minute, God give folk a chance to repent. And, and these people were going to take these angels and do ungodly things to them. Hello, saints? Mm-hmm. These are angels of judgment. How about Second Samuel chapter 24? Oh, the whole chapter is like, wow. 
2 Samuel chapter 24 for your reading pleasure. How about we, we're going to turn to 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 35. 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 35. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians and hundred, yeah, there it was. I knew it was a whole lot of hundred thousands. A hundred and four score and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. I don't know about y'all, but for one angel to kill 185,000 humans in just a few hours, that's, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's an angel of judgment. Woo. Can you imagine how fierce that is? Psalm 78, 49. Psalm 78, 49. I know you're here somewhere, Psalms, because you're one of my favorite books. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Yeah, one thing's for sure, saints, you do not want the judgment of God upon you. He is a consuming fire. He is a jealous God. Some of these angels, they really are not friendly, especially if they come in for judgment. Run! Run. Ain't nowhere to hide, saints. If you ain't right with Jesus... Them angels going to find you. You ain't. You can build all the bunkers you want to. You can entrench yourself into all the caves. You can go underground in whatever bunker you want to. There ain't nowhere we can hide from our creator. Think about that. Angels execute judgments. Yeah, everybody wants to hear about the sweet holy angels and the little baby looking angels, you know, flying around. But they don't want to think about God's judgment. Hey. That's up to you. All I can do is give you the word. Minister to saints. Now, this would have to be fun. Can you imagine being a worker angel, having a minister to saints, and some saints ain't got a lick of sense, dumb as a rock, and then others it's like, oh, so super spiritually powerful and above everybody. Uh, you know, you're either on one end or the other. You can't hear no how. Think about it, saints. If we just kind of get balanced, we might be able to hear something that God had to say. Might be able to see one of them angels. We might even be able to interact on God's authority and God's permission. I seriously thank God for the ministering angels. And I think they're just like us. Angels among us. Literally angels among us. We don't even know they're among us. Because usually we either so high or so, so lofty or so low that... We can't imagine that anyhow. Now think about it, saints. They're sent to minister to us. Hey, Sister Mandy, how you doing, Sis Sister Mandy? Tennessee! What's up, Tennessee? Minister to the saints. How about 1 Kings 19, 5 through 7? 1 Kings 19, 5 through 7. Ministering angels. Yeah, that sounds a whole lot better than the angels of judgment fixing to cut you down. I'd much rather have the angel coming to minister to me than to take me to some sort of judgment. I don't want to go to the woodshed and yeah, no. Let's yeah, let's do this. First Kings nineteen, five through seven. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Thank you, Lord, for giving us understanding. First Kings nineteen five through seven and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. I don't, I'll be honest with you guys. If an angel come and touch me and I'm asleep, tell me to get up and eat. I'll be like, I'm passing out. Hello? It's like, ah! And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Wow! Oh, Elijah boy got it going on. God sent him an angel to bake him something to eat and bring him water and take care of him. Hey. God loves us. What? You need an angel food cake. <laughs> Jim's 
Come on, Jim. He said he didn't make him no angel food cake. All right, Jim. <laughs> that's funny. I don't know about y'all, but that's funny. Angel's supposed to be making him angel food cake, according to Jimmy Street. Of course, that's Jim. Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. So he let him go back to sleep and gets him up again and feeds him again. I'm like, man, that is so awesome. God loves us so much, saints, that he will send us an angel to feed us. He'll send us an angel to give us something to drink. He'll send us an angel to encourage us. Sometimes that little old lady or that little old man that's trying to pray for you or some crazy lady with a hat on, Sometimes they might just be an angel and not another human being. So we entertain angels unawares. But again, according to Jimmy Street, they should need to be bringing us some angel food cake. That will be the true tale of a ministering angel to bring us angel food cake. I'm going to write that one down. Thank you, Jesus. How about Daniel chapter 6, verse 22? Yeah, you want to you wanna mix this up a little bit, saints. You don't want to just have the same scripture over and over again. Daniel 6, 22. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> the angel of the Lord was sent to minister unto Daniel so shut the lion's mouth. Now, that's the way you do it right there. Shut up, devil. Shut up. You have no right. You have no authority. Lord, you've sent me ministering angels, and they are going to shut the mouth of the lion. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! How about the work of angels when they rule nations? It's like, oh, I thought men ruled nations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's let's look into this, saints. Come on. Daniel chapter 10, verses 13 through 21. Angels ruling nations. I don't think we realize that sometimes, saints. The men and the women that are in ruling authority that we see, the physical human beings, they literally got a spirit being ruling them, and that's usually some sort of angel. If you will look into it in Ephesians chapter 6, you're going to see that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I ain't going to preach you a sermon today because I'm talking about angels, but they some wicked, wicked angels that are controlling some folks up in this country and all over the world. So we need to be praying. Amen, sister. Yeah. Woo, I get excited about telling the truth. People don't want to hear the truth. Say, so if you tell the truth, they're going to be offended. Well, I'd rather you be offended and make it to heaven than for me to let you go around and, and feel all good about yourself and living and doing whatever you want to and I never said nothing to you and you die and go to hell, okay? I love you enough to tell you this is what the Word says. But we're talking about angels ruling nations. Daniel 10, 13 through 21. Man, I'll get off on my little squirrel uh, squirrel trail. We'll be, on, we'll be talking about some serious nuts. Okay? Daniel 10, 13 through 21. Oh, that's a lot of scripture. Yeah, let's do it. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. I like to put my name in there and pray scriptures too. If you want to, you go right ahead. Hey, we are beloved of the Lord. Oh, Leslie. Oh, Mandy. Oh, Bridget. Uh, Melinda. We are greatly beloved of the Lord. I can put my name in there. Yeah. Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For unto thee I am now sent. Yeah, the angel is sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Whoo! I'll tell you what, buddy. I'm telling you what. You are going to be trembling and you're going to be shaking in your boots. Don't ask God to show you angels and then just going to pass dead away. You stand there and take it. Then he said unto me, fear not. This tells us that Daniel was scared. For from the first day that you did set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I came, I come for thy words. This is serious, saints. This is a, an angel that is like one of the rulers, and he comes seriously. Mm. 
Oh, this is so cool. Because Daniel prayed, the angel was sent to him. Now let's look in this a little bit further. Verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. So that means that the prince of the kingdom of Persia is a ruling angel over the kingdom of Persia. He withstood me one in 20 days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now think about that. You've got two archangels, Gabriel, and he had to call Michael for some help because the uh, the prince of the kingdom of Persia was, was fighting against him. He had to call in reinforcements. And this is such a powerful ruling spirit over Persia that you got to, God's got to send two chief angels. Woo! So, yeah, we just think we're praying against principalities, powers, the rulers of darkness, this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places. Hey, we ain't doing nothing without the blood of Jesus. We ain't doing nothing without the Holy Ghost and the fire and the power of God up in us. But let me tell you what, when you got that, you got everything you need. The Holy Spirit. Whoop! Some angels. Now remember, this is Old Testament. In the New Testament, we got the Holy Ghost. Mm. So, they rule nations. Now verse 14, Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is many days. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground and I became dumb. Man, he's sitting there getting this message from this holy angel of God and he passes out. He basically goes, bam, head down, nose plant in the carpet, saints, okay? I set my face toward the ground and I became dumb. That don't mean he lost his mind. That means he's like, ah, hello. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons, what? Part of my Bible's done is so wet and been used so many times one of the words mission, missing. One of the sons of God, I hope. Touch my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision of my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. That's telling us, dude, brother Daniel there, he's like, Oh, hello. Ugh. Yeah. This is so good. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remain no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Daniel, boy, he's scared. He's shaking in his boots. This is a holy angel of God. Man, mm -mm. people may talk, oh, I'm just interacting with these angels all the time, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, you keep thinking that. Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man and he strengthened me. See, God is going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. The holy angels might be allowed to interact with you. But saints, we, we cannot be understand all these spirit beings and think that we're just going to stand there and just, yeah, look, rub elbows. We're going to rub elbows with them like we're one of them. Uh-uh. No. Hello, holy reverence. And said, verse 19, O oh man, greatly beloved. Ladies, you are greatly beloved. Peace be unto thee. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Peace, peace, peace. Be strong. Yay, be strong. A holy angel is going to strengthen you and help you. He ain't going to whack you over the head with a sword and kill you, okay? That's the judgment angel. That's up to God. But these holy angels, they're sent to minister to us, even though we're talking about ruling angels. The angels that come to us, God ain't going to scare us to death. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. It's like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Then he said, Knowest thou wherefore I came unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I've gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecius shall come. So we're talking about one of the ruling angels or, uh, yeah, entities that rule nations, they actually rule the men and women that rule these nations, saints. We need to wake up and realize we are not fighting flesh and blood. We're not fighting these politicians in Washington. They are literally being used of enemies of God, spirit beings. Come on, saints. It's right here in the Word of God. If if it was in Daniel's time, it's probably even worse than our time. Just look around. This ain't human beings. They're being used as puppets. They're blind. They don't know Jesus. 
He said, the prince of Grecia shall come, but I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. Saints, we need to be in the scripture of truth, and we need to get out of the world, and we need to get out of all this other stuff, and we need to be in the scriptures of truth. The, okay, hello, let me make it plain. The scriptures, the holy scriptures of truth. The Lord is not going to lie to us. He's going to show us everything in his word that is for our benefit wow this is so cool i will show show thee that which is noted in scripture of truth and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but michael your prince so we're talking about holy angels here fighting against ruling angels that are over nations we have the ruling nation of persia and grecia it's clear right here that these are, we're talking about angels, not human beings. It's right here in the Word, saints. So, um, also, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. Let's put a, a cap on this one. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. All right? That's an angel ruling over a nation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Seriously. A great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Well, we could just keep right on reading on that one. The saints were not fighting against flesh and blood. And it is not worth, it's not worth it for us to fuss and argue with a human being. We need to go to our prayer closet. We need to get along with God and we need to tell him about it. Okay? We need to tell him about it. And he's going to go ahead of us and make a crooked path straight. He might even tell them that they need to make it right with us before we even go to them. Okay? Let God deal with this ahead of time. He will make your crooked path straight. He'll send an angel ahead of you and make that crooked path straight. Get it right with your brothers and sisters, saints. We don't have time to be fussing or arguing amongst us. We got too many angels that we need to be praying about that God will take some of them out and send some good ones in their place. Oh, goodness, help me, Jesus. How about the work of angels? And it says, help each individual. Oh, yes. Angels help us individually. My sister Tammy shared a story with me. I'm not going to go into detail, but she was two years old. There was a burning house, and an angel come and just literally saved her. Took her out of that burning trailer house when she was two years old. They all thought she was dead. Picked her up, took her out of this burning house, protected her, took her, translated her behind the crowds and the firemen and the fire trucks, and she's standing there with the angel, and they ain't ever seen her. Fireman comes out of this burning house with this little, one of them dolls that, you know, was like three feet tall, and this was like 58 years ago. She's 60. And seriously, my mother goes berserk because she thinks her baby is just, you know, dead, and the fireman's holding this doll, and he's like, this is all I found, and my mother's just going crazy. My sister's behind them all. She walks up, and she says, I'm okay. Well, she was two. I don't know if she said anything or not, but can you imagine what they were thinking? How'd she get out of that house, saints? An angel, okay? it's It happens all the time, and most folks don't even say anything. I just turned 52, and for my birthday, she gives me that gift and tells me that an angel saved her from that burning trailer that day. That's amazing. That is God. So don't tell me that angels don't exist. I'll tell you, yeah, you need to read the Bible. You need to get some faith. Matthew 18.10, they help individuals. Well, I praise God that he spared my sister's life because she has four birth children and she has a, a stepson that is just like a birth child that she's raised. And now she's uh, trying to raise my niece. So I'm like, thank you, God, for sparing her life and sending an angel. Ooh, I bet all of us got an angel story. Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. They will help each individual. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Oh, yeah, I don't know about y'all, but that gives me some mm, Holy Spirit tingly going on. Because I don't want to mess with one of God's little babies. Okay? And I ain't talking about 
just true, you know, just newborn baby Christians. I'm talking about them little bitty children. True little human beings. God help every one of us that if we've ever thought something bad about a child, if we've ever, you know, any, any of us talking about abortions, I've never done it myself, but I can't imagine it, but then I can imagine the pain and the anguish the woman goes for, goes through after, after she's done this, if she has any conscience at all. So I have a shout out to, to women out there that God's holy angels are, are watching over those babies. And, and I just, I got to shout this out. If you're pregnant and, and somebody's telling you, you need to abort that baby, you don't because they have an angel that beholds God's face every day and he can get you through it. He can get them through it. Give the baby up for adoption, saints. The holy angels are taking care of these babies. Again, judgment's going to come on us because of all this stuff going on. They help every individual. If we didn't have holy angels, Lord help us, how did we ever get to where we're at? Think about it. Thank God for his angels. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Thank God for his blood. Woo! I'm going to preach here in a minute. Sing, praise, and worship God. That's the work of angels. That's their work. We're human beings. We were made by God and created by Him to have fellowship with Him and worship Him. It's not work for us saints. We're supposed to be living sacrifices, but the angels actually, it's one of their requirements, one of their job descriptions. Psalm 103.20. One of my favorites. Mm. Psalm 103 and 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength and do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your angels that protect our personage, our property, and our possessions. Thank you. I praise you. I glorify you. Angels, the work of angels are to strengthen us in trials. Now, this is an amazing one because it, um, it's about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. I get excited about this one, saints, because he's God in the flesh, but the angels had to come and even strengthen him in trials. Matthew chapter 4. So everything that, that we go through, he's already went through. Hey, Charlie, what's up? Hey, Miss Florence. Love you guys. I love all of you. Strengthen us, the angels strengthen us in trials. Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself, as soon as he was dunked in the water, the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And you know that every devil that had an assignment had to come and see if they could get through to him. And Satan's like, dude, y'all don't even know what you're talking about. If you, I will show you how to get this done. So the devil comes to him and tempts him. And Jesus put the word on him once, twice, three times, devil. You got the word and the Lord himself put it on you. But it says that the devil lit, left him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Saints, if the holy angels came and ministered to Jesus, don't think they can't come minister to you. He's Jesus. He knows everything about us. And uh, you might get a visit from an angel and didn't even know it. You better treat folks right. Because you don't ever know who they are and what they are about. Just bless them anyhow. How about the work of the Lord in leading sinners to gospel workers? I personally pray when people have unsaved loved ones, that the Lord will put someone in their path to speak a word to them that maybe the family member is not going to be able to get through to them, but God can send someone across their path, another human being, an angel. But according to the word of God in Acts chapter 10, verse 3, Sinners will be led to gospel workers by angels. Now, the angel don't take you by the hand, but I bet you he can make your path to be where you wind up in there. Uh-huh. In the place that they're at. That's one of them God appointments. 
Acts chapter 10, verse 3. This is so cool. I love the Word of God. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Ooh, you read the rest of the story on your own. But God will use his holy angels and send them to lead sinners to gospel workers. You're a gospel worker. If you're Holy Spirit led, if you're born again, you are a gospel worker and you're supposed to be ministering to somebody somewhere. I don't care if it's in your house, at Walmart, at the gas station, at work, at school, whatever. Minister to someone, encourage them. Because if you ask God for a God appointment, he's going to send an angel to send some sinner person or someone that needs something from you. And you better be available and, and quit being so busy. If you're at Walmart shopping and you just take an extra minute, somebody might need something from you. Otherwise, you're too busy being under Satan's yoke. B-U-S-Y. Yeah. Busy. Oh, Lord, you strengthen us in trials with your holy angels. You lead sinners, to, you use them to lead sinners to gospel workers like us. How about, I love this one, direct preachers. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't think that the preacher needs no direction if he's got the Holy Ghost, but guess what? We all get in the flesh, don't we, saints? Now, I'm not pointing a finger at you unless I got three pointing back at me. How do I know this? <laughs> just put it this way I've been there direct preachers Acts chapter 8 verse 26 hmm and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is desert get your butt up boy we got some work to do hello come on get up saints you got some work to do get on the internet Pick up the telephone. You have work to do. The holy angels will direct. Mm -hmm. Sometimes direct your path because you ain't in tune with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you, but sometimes he's got to give you a knock over the head and send an angel to you just so you get in the right direction, saint. Don't tell me you ain't experienced that because if you do, you lying. Your lips are moving. No, no, no. I'm having a good time today. It is an awesome day to praise the Lord. Every day is an awesome day to praise the Lord. I just get really excited about my chihuahua. He's so excited. Oh, Mom, I'm so excited you're home. I'm so excited. Well, hey, I feel that way about Jesus. What about angels appearing in dreams? Dude, I seriously had a dream the other night. And this angel came over and he had, I'm like, he comes and I see in the dream, I'm in this dream now, okay? And I'm like, I'm not sure. It might have been a vision. It might have been really happening. You just never know. Um, this angel appeared in this dream, and I seen this. It, it was in another room. It was a bright light. Yeah, bright. And it came through, and it had some kind of mask on. I looked at that angel. I'm like, listen, dude, this ain't going to work. The Lord rebuke you. And he took his mask off, and then he was dressed in this other kind of suit. And I said, uh-uh. Uh-uh, the Lord rebuke you. And he took off another whole, like, uniform outfit, and there was this little old gray-haired man there, and the next thing I knew, he was then taking me in this dream and translated me, and I'm seeing him bless folks with cash. And I'm like, wow. I don't know what that dream was about, but I woke up, and I was trembling all up inside me. I don't know how to explain that, but all up inside me, my whole entire being, I was just trembling like, not the outside, the inside. So I'm like, angels can appear in dreams. I don't need no interpretation because I already got that from the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you, angels can appear in dreams. Because if they appeared in real life, you'd probably fall over like Daniel on your you know, face plant on your nose and fall out dumb, Okay. So God will sometimes send them to us in our sleep. Matthew chapter 1. Ah, see, that's simple enough. We've all been in Matthew chapter 1, haven't we? Well, if you haven't, get in it. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 through 24. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, 
to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Whoa! I know if I see an angel in my dream, okay? Yeah, and sometimes God's got a sense of humor. So he's testing to see if I'm going to test that spirit. Am I going to test the spirit or am I just going to believe any old angel that walks in the door? Think about that, saints. Test the spirit. And if that spirit is of God, you're going to know. Ooh, and he, she shall, and she shall bring forth a son, and that you will call his name Jesus, Yeshua. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with son, and shall bring forth a son. I'm sorry, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Oh, I don't know about y'all, but that word of God is just like, whew. So angels appear in your dream, saint, but you are required by the word of God to test the spirits. First John chapter four, test the spirits. If you go over um, a little bit, back up a little bit, you'll see that angels of light, Satan is an angel of light. So it's no strange circumstance here that his ministers are also angels of light. The, you know, the wolf in uh, sheep's clothing test the spirit if you get duped it's your own fault you've been warned in the scriptures the work of angels to minister before god revelation 8 2 minister before god see what we should do is take a little um uh, look at the examples the angels are setting for us saints and minister before god you have a full-time ministry and that's ministering to an audience of one his name is yeshua hamashiach Yahweh, your father, God say, Lord, here I am. I'm your living sacrifice. I'm going to minister to you. You don't need nobody else to minister to. You can stay 24 hours a day, seven days a week before him and minister to him. And the more you minister to him, the more capable you're going to be able to minister to someone else. Minister before God, Revelation 8 and 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. They ain't going to stand before God and just stand there like, hey, dude, what's up? Hey, yeah, how's it going today? They're going to be down. They're going to be bowing and worshiping. Holy, 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 holy God Almighty. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, we like this one, don't we? They bind satan yeah they bind the devil and uh see this is what he don't like he don't like the end of the book because if you ever read the end of the book and figure out who you are you know the battle's already been won the victory's already been won you don't even have to at some points saints we ain't even got to engage just say the lord rebuke you the lord he's got this Revelation chapter 20. We're not going to read the whole verse. I mean the whole thing. But guess what? Verse 20. This is simple enough. I'm sorry. Chapter 20 verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Guess what? Read the whole chapter. You're going to find out what happened to Satan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're going to bind him. We just think we can bind him. The only one that can do that is the Lord himself. When he sends an angel to do it, that angel going to get the job done. But in the name of Jesus, which that is the name whereby we have the power and the authority and the right by his blood. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but that'll preach. They guard the abyss. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. The angels guard the abyss. Well, we know they guard gates, too. We know they guard Eden. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. That star is an angel. I got a horse. Her name is Star. That means angel. Come on, saints. That's awesome. The angels regather Israel. Matthew 24. 31 the angels regather israel now that's got to be a job because god has to tell them where he hid all of them especially the lost tribes think about that saints yeah you got a lot of a lot of controversy going on with that but i'll just look at it this way god's got this 
I ain't getting in that one. Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Praise him, praise him. I'll praise him in the morning. I'll praise him at noonday. Yeshua, Yeshua. I'll praise him when the sun goes down. Come on, saints. You need to praise him. Don't let me just sit here and praise him all by myself. Y'all be praising him right there in your house. Woohoo! How about him sending his angels to protect saints? This is my favorite. I ain't even got to turn there. The angel of the Lord encampeth about them that trust in him, and he shall deliver them. Psalm 34, 7. Woo! Psalm 91, 11. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Acts chapter 12 verses 7 through 10 going to protect us. Why? We are the beloved of the Lord. Yes. If he can get my two-year-old sister from behind the couch in a burning trailer house and translate her and pick her up, take her outside and set her out behind the fire trucks and the crowds and all the, 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 the chaos, he can certainly protect us. That's amazing, saints. I don't know about y'all, but he can protect us. He's God. He's your creator. He ain't got to come himself. He's got other people he can send. You're his hands and feet and voice. Don't you think your little feet and hands need to be working? Speaking that word. They might not want to hear it, but one day if you get through to them, you might have saved a soul from hell. Come on, saints. You can do this. If he can save you, you can help him. Does he need our help? No. But he did make us to worship him, so get about it. How about to separate the good and the bad? See, we got the tear and the wheat in the church. I just like to go in there and just tear it up. Mm. But God knows the hearts. Sometimes we're revealed some stuff about hearts, but we don't have all the answers. So let God deal with the tear and the wheat. They are to grow together until God sends his harvesters. Now, think about that. They separate the good and the bad. Matthew 13, 39 through 41. At the end, when God is the one that's going to separate the wheat from the tares, in Matthew 13, 39 through 41, it says, The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are his angels. The angels, saints. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Think about that, saints. That's one of them sea law moments. He's going to separate the good and the bad. I don't want to be in the bad bunch that gets burned up. Accompany Christ to earth. Hey, this sounds like fun. Maybe they're going to be riding horses. Yeah, come on. Matthew 16, 27. I get so excited. Horsey, horsey, horsey. Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his work. A lot of my work going to get burnt up, hay and stubble. That's why I'm working now to have some gold and some silver stored up. And I ain't talking about physical gold and silver. I'm talking about spiritual stuff here, saints. Wherever your heart is, mm -hmm, that's what we're talking about here. I want to accompany Christ to earth with his angels. Yeah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Mm, yeah. Witness confessions. How about the angels, their work is to witness confessions. Did y'all ever hear, hear that one before? This is really cool. Luke 15, 8 through 9. Okay, we got to have a witness. You ever heard that? Can I get a witness? Woo, woo. Um, what about the angels being the witness? Think about that. Witness confessions, Luke 15, 8 and 9. This is so much, I don't know about y'all, but I love to study the Word of God. 
And uh, I know I have at least an audience of one, and that's Yeshua HaMashiach, my Lord, my Savior, my King. But I can guarantee you there's a whole lot of angels that are watching and listening. It ain't about humans. He said, Leslie, you teach the one that shows up. I got this, Lord. No, I don't. He's got it. I just got to obey what he tells me to do. All I got to do is deliver the message, and he's quite capable of getting it through. So if I obey him and you obey him, just deliver it, saints. He's got it. We do not got it. We just think we do. Luke 15, 8 and 9. Angels witness our confessions. Either that, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Now think about that. The angels are witnessing our confessions. If you go back to Psalm 103.20, the angels hearken to the word of God. So if we're speaking the word of God, the angels are going to be listening to what we're saying. Come on, saints. So that's why we need to be real careful about what we're speaking out our pie hole. Okay? It needs to be life because the angels are listening to our confessions. Now, what if this gal had found it and said nothing to nobody and gave God no glory? The angels would be writing that down too. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. And he will give you the victory. Woo! Hallelujah. How about the angels receiving departed spirits? This is also part of their work. Receiving departed spirits. Luke 16, 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. You notice they didn't talk about no holy angels come and getting him. There's your clue, saints. How about give laws? Angels give laws. Part of their work is to give a law. Acts chapter 7. Verse 53, angels got a whole lot of work. There got to be a whole lot of them, saints, because there's a lot of work. You know, if we'd be doing some of the work we're supposed to do, maybe them poor angels wouldn't have to work so hard and overtime all the time. Think about it. We some lazy people. I know I'm not talking about you. Just give laws. Acts 7, 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? Hello? Angels give laws. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2. Hebrews. Yeah, it'd be nice if he did get up and brew, but uh, I guess I'll have to wait for coffee till later. Ha ha, y'all get that later, won't you? Okay, we're both certified baristas. You think he could get up and make me some coffee? Yeah, okay, it's fine. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, quit laughing, Jim, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Mm -hmm. Keep reading on that one, saints. The word spoken by angels. Think about that. Mm -hmm. They give laws. Angels guard the tree of life. Genesis 3, 24. Genesis 3, 24. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Yes, one angel you ain't gonna want to mess with right there, dude. Uh-huh. Talking about a flaming sword. Mm-hmm. See, we've been given the sword of the Spirit, which is the spoken word of God. We don't want to mess with the angel with the flaming sword. Yeah, that's a little scary. Uh, he's guarding the tree of life. And I was just studying the tree of life the other day. Yesterday, I was like, oh, man, you should look it up. Study about the tree of life. Hello. Epiphany. Light bulb moments. 
How about them giving revelations? We've already talked about that. Um, coming to Daniel, talking to Daniel, coming to um, John the Revelator and, and revealing things to him. Um, guys, there's just so much stuff that angels do. Let's look at real quick 2 Kings 1 15. 2 Kings 1 and 15. Come on. 2 Kings 1 15. That's a long book, ain't it? And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. So an angel was sent to Elijah to say, hey, you know, go do this. Don't, don't worry about it. Just go do it. Daniel eight nineteen. Daniel. Woo. Can you imagine some of these guys and what they actually experienced? And we just think we know something. Yeah. We're just talking about it. Jim and I were talking about it earlier on a funny note how you got Methuselah and um, Noah and Moses and all these patriarchs sitting around in heaven just swapping stories. And what did what, you say? Yeshua walks by and he says what? He sees Jesus Christ and says, look at that little whippersnapper. He sees Jesus Christ and says, hey, look at that little whippersnapper. Ha ha, that's really supposed to be funny, right? Okay. Sense of humor here, guys. Come on. Daniel chapter 8, verse 19. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation, for at the time appointed the end shall be. So an angel was revealing that to Daniel. Um, how about imparting God's will? The holy angels, they will impart God's will. Acts 5. Acts chapter 5. Nineteen and twenty, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth, and said, "Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life." Wow, the angels impart God's will. This is what God wants. Get up, go do it. If you'll just read the word, saints, you're gonna know we ain't got to have all these angels coming to us. Take a little of our workload off. If we weren't so lazy, they wouldn't have to work so much overtime. Think about it. But thank God they're there because some of us hard-headed need an angel to come and appear to us. How about them bringing answers to prayers? Now, we've seen that in Daniel chapter 9. How about Acts chapter 10? Angels bringing answers to prayers. Ah, and we actually touched on this earlier. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian Band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he had looked on him, he was afraid. Aha, uh -huh, there you go again. He's afraid again. And said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for me one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Hmm, angels bring answers to prayers. Did you know that you might be an angel in disguise and not even know it? And I don't mean some kind of weird stuff. You might actually be somebody's angel that they've been praying to God to send them. So if you are, it's not like you're going to grow wings and what people think angels are. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you being used of God to answer someone's prayers. If he'll use his angels to answer prayers, he'll use you to be an answer to a prayer. Somebody, but you know, they might need a phone call. They might need a letter, a card, a random act of kindness. Saints, be an angel, okay? Don't be a devil. 